room, which is here. Uh, there will be no meeting on May 17th, 2016. With that, that brings us to the first item on our agenda, which is Planning and Zoning Administrator's Mr. Report. Mr. Chairman, could I just break in and say, on behalf of the Board, it is nice to welcome back, I think for the third time, Mr. Koenig, who has taken over from Tom Mayon, and uh, I've, I know I've seen Tom here for ever since I've been on the Board, so it's great to see him back again. Welcome, Tom. Thank you for that. Probably more than the third time. We're good to see you again, too. <laughs> that brings our engineer count up back where it ought to be anyway. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Robert, what do you got for us today? Uh, I've got two things tonight. Uh, first is a reminder from staff that the uh, that staff is still awaiting the board's comments on the proposed revisions to the sign ordinance. So if you could can kindly get those in to Jillian or Tim as soon as you could, we'd appreciate it. And the other item is the regional impact determinations for both the Sanderson and um, Robin M. Warren case, and neither of them staff feels has regional impact. Is there any discussion regarding the um, regional impact recommendations from staff? If yeah. not, is there a motion? I'll move. And I'll second. Lynn moves, Alistair seconds that we support the staff's recommendation that these are not of regional impact. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7 0 0. Um, are there any other items, Robert? No, I'm all set. Are there any questions of staff from members of the board? Seeing none, the next item on our agenda is item three. David Sanderson is the applicant and owner review for acceptance and consideration of a waiver of full site plan review to permit the construction of a third residential unit. The parcel is located at 81 Severance Bridge Road in the R Residential and Wetlands Conservation Districts. Tax map 3A, lot 29. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, nope. Go ahead. Is the applicant here? Come on forward. Settle in and sign in on that clipboard. Make sure your microphones turn on and then tell us what you got proposed. Good evening. Please introduce yourself and tell um, us about your. I'm David proposal. Sanderson, and I'm. Uh, is your light? Is there a green light on that microphone? It's on. Yep. Bring it a little closer to you, then. Then we can hear you. Okay. Not we can hear you, but it's the folks at home. All right. Um, David Sanderson. Um, I'm proposing to um, add a third unit and um, an existing garage structure, turning into my primary residence. And it's currently a four-car garage, and I want to. Go up a story and put a uh, my house there. Okay. Um, the plans that you had sent over, let's see. Probably ought to just deal with the completeness first. Um, what's the will of the board with respect to completeness of the application? I think we have enough for, to consider the applicant. Whether we have enough to give it final approval, Mr. Chairman, will come from our discussions. But I make a motion that we uh, accept the plan for review. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Second by Desiree. Any other discussion? All in favor of accepting the application as complete, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? S Neither. 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 We don't have any alternates today. All regular members. One, two, three. Yep. 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 No, no alternate voting today. So 7-0-0 to uh, accept the application is complete. Uh, the applicants requested a waiver of full site plan review. What's the will of the board with respect to that request? Um, before we go to that, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask <coughs> one question of Mr. Sanderson, if I may. And when I look at the pictures of the existing garage and your new home, can I have your assurance that the footprint of the new home is exactly the same as the footprint of the garage? Yes, there's um, a deck on those pictures on the back and we're taking the deck off. And it's been I wasn't worried so much about the deck. I was wanting to make sure that you exactly were using the same footprint yes. because otherwise you'd have to do a site plan. Yes, it's the exact same footprint. Okay, minus the deck. Yeah, minus the deck. Okay. 
Any other questions or discussion? So what's the will of the board with respect to the waiver of full site plan review? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we waive the requirement for a full site plan review. Second for that motion? Second. Second by Desiree. Any discussion? Uh, on the basis that strict conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant and the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations. All right, thank you for that. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? 700 to waive full site plan review. Are there any abutters or interested citizens who wish to weigh in before the board makes any decisions on this application? Seeing no, nobody come forward, we'll close the public hearing. Um, are there any other questions or comments from members of the board? Lynn. Um, what's happening with the septic? I'm going to get a septic designed. It's going to be a separate, separate septic than the existing one that's there right now. It'll be a separate septic just for this building or yes. a, big, a bigger system that'll handle all the property? Um, I was, I'd like to add one, a separate septic system, if I could, if I could, if I could add it to that one, I'm not, I'm not sure exact procedure, you know, I, I'm not sure what a septic designer would tell you to do either, I was just yeah, sort of yeah. curious as to which one it is. Um, the picture, the site plan that you've given us has a space designated for where the septic is. If you were to add a separate independent system, would you add it within that rectangle or are you looking at someplace else on the par property to put it? Um, I've got to go with whatever the designer says, you know. Okay. Sure. They're going to uh, also keep you set back from the wetlands on that one probably mm -hmm. further than the <coughs> I don't know where there's room for it either, but they'll <coughs> l let them let the engineers figure it out. Yeah, we have to go way back because we have to stay away from the well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have to stay 75 feet away from the well and the, the well, well is on the opposite side of the duplex that's already there. Yeah, the well is. Yeah. You go behind the duplex. Excuse You're too me, close you to the well. Duplex, oh, okay. you, you have to worry about okay. getting too close to where the well yep. is on the side there. Mm -hmm. and so now stay you, out of the wetlands. You currently have a two-bedroom septic servicing four bedrooms. Um, I'm not aware of that. Yep. Lynn, is there an indication where you see the that he's got a two-bedroom septic? I checked the, the building plans. Okay. Uh, he had a three-bedroom septic that failed back in 1990 and it was replaced with a two-bedroom septic. That's before I bought the property. Yeah, I'm just oh, saying okay. that's yeah. that's what's that's in what's existence there. now. Okay. <coughs> so when you're going to have to do something with that thing, huh? yeah. as well. Yeah, hmm. I'm sure the designer will be able to come up with something for you, although it may have to be in that front yard area in order to stay away from the well and the wetlands. Okay. Um, the, they size the septic fields based on the number of bedrooms, and it's mm -hmm. some base number plus 250 square feet of septic per bedroom. Okay. And so when you add up all the bedrooms that you have, you're going to end up with something close to a 2,000 or 2,500 square foot septic system, um, which would fit in that front area, but you'd have to figure it out. And then they also have, <coughs> through DES, some ability to do yeah. smaller footprint ones with newer technology. Okay. Um, However, for our viewpoint, it's just a condition of approval that you yep. get a adequately a approved and adequately sized septic system into place. <coughs> okay. Any other discussion or comments? Mr. Chairman, um, normally <coughs> we'd want to have some indication. As, as I understand it, your access to both to the site is <coughs> through uh, the, the, uh, the Amherst property that butts you. Um, do we know, have we seen, have you shown the staff that you have got an approved easement to get through that site? I pay taxes to Amherst. You pay <laughs> for <laughs> Have you shown it? That, I mean, legally, we should know that it's been seen by the staff as being there. I'm not saying it doesn't exist yeah. and you haven't. It should be on the deed. It should be on the deed so we I, can see it. I own from the center of the driveway to the left. And there's another duplex down there, owns from the center to the no, right. But no, but your your access yeah, that's to Sevens Bridge Road yes. comes through an Amherst property. I own that land in Amherst. I paid property taxes to Amherst also. Okay, so he doesn't need an easement over his own land, but your, right. you, your driveway mm -hmm. does share land with someone else, and there would be a cross easement for it. I, heard, I saw that mentioned in some of the notes yeah. in here. Yeah, but you own that property completely or not? From the center of the driveway to the left is mine. Uh, uh, and yeah, but you're, go you're coming across a piece of land that isn't <coughs> yours legally. We, we would ask for the 
somebody in the community development office has at least, or the building department or somewhere, has a site of the Amherst, the easement you must have got with the owner of property 2-181-4, who must be an Amherst resident, indicating that you have got something. It's, it's just for our own purposes, because officially that's what yeah. we have to do to meet the ordinances. You're still a Merrimack resident, and you have to meet our Merrimack requirements. And without sight of that deed, which I'm sure exists and you've paid for and all good stuff. Yeah, sure. This is not that complicated. It's it, just getting a copy of just the, get find, a copy. finding a copy of the, of the, of the <clears throat> easement. It may be a separate deed. It may be within your deed for your house and showing it to the community development department so they can have a look at it and see if it allows you to have more traffic on it for this new apartment, uh, this new home. It's just a legal formality. You know so that would be one of the conditions of approval that we would yeah. put, that you'd have to get that and show it to the department. Will, will you get that to me in writing, what you need? Yes. When, <laughs> we, when you ultimately get the approval letter from the town, it'll have all the conditions that you have to meet okay. um, listed in it. Okay. Did you, in fact, also see the letter that Robert Price put together, the memo that's gone to us, but did you get a copy of this? Yes, I, I believe Okay, so, so those are generally the conditions. Those will be the conditions. Which we just, Ten conditions will just add with any modifications that we do tonight. Okay. So. Any other comments or questions? Nelson? Yeah, I would just like to be clear to the applicant and to staff <coughs> that there's three other, apparently, three other pieces of property that are being utilized for access to this property uh, of Mr. Sanderson's. Now, maybe he owns some of them, but I'm not sure he owns all three. And um, while I can't identify the... 3A291. Uh, it's the property to the south. 3A291. One, which one is... One is south. And then coming into the property, these two properties here, which are in Amherst... That's, that's the ones he's got an easement across. He's got it. There's two properties in Amherst, and another in Merrimack, yeah. apparently. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the, this that, is his home. Right? But yeah, and then 3A291, but yeah, yes. That's Merrimack. That's Merrimack, yes. Yeah, that's right. We want to make sure that's okay. right. Okay, there's two properties in Amherst, one in Merrimack, that abut you, that you're utilizing for access. Yeah, it's a shared driveway for 81 A and B and 79 A and B. We share that. There's just two duplexes down there. Right yeah. Now. Okay. Yeah, I just want to know sense. that the staff will be looking for those easements and no objections from potential property owners. Okay. Yep. Okay. Are there any other topics of discussion for the applicant? Is, and will you only have one well to supply both properties, or are you going to put a second well in? Um, Depends like said, on what the I'd well like will deliver, to, probably. I'd like to keep it all separate if I could. You'd like that separate as well? Yeah. Okay, we just like to know these things. It just sort of, we have to get it documented. Okay. Right. When you go forward with that, this has nothing to do with our approval, but um, get your septic designer and your well person on the same page because right. each well that you put in has a 75-foot radius around it that you can't put the septic in. And so you start to run out of land yeah. pretty soon if you start drawing these big circles. Okay. Any place, um, but it's nothing to do with our approval other than understanding what it is that you have proposed. Desiree, a couple of questions. I don't think we spoke about uh, parking on here in the memo, the staff memo. It says uh, that the plan shows nine spaces, which is one short of the ten that was calculated as required. There's a two-car garage. So the garage also. counts as the tenth one. So there's still a garage. There it is, right there in that paragraph. Well, thank you. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry about that. It looked good the other day, and then I forgot. Which um, one? And then my my other question is more. Those are real parking spaces. Yeah, that's on the side of the road. Yeah. That's his driveway. That's his driveway. Okay. Nothing there. My my other question uh, has to do with the architecture of the house. So. Um, you you didn't increase the actual square foot or uh, footprint of the the building itself where it Correct. lands on the land, but but I assume this is the the jut out. That's uh -huh. a couple yeah. of feet. The upper yeah. story is a little bit bigger than the lower. Yeah, so you're technically I think that's more. Uh, I don't know if it counts as more runoff. Like uh, you're you're. My words are not coming to me today. It's less. 
water that's hitting the ground on there. So you're going to have area. like you're going to have uh, gutters, and especially on this side, your water that's going to come off your roof is going to come down, and then um, additional water, like an extra couple of feet times the length of the building that's being caught uh, and going down towards the wetlands on there. So I don't follow that. Same amount of rain would fall in that area, wouldn't it, that you're talking about? Well, the roof is a little bit bigger because your second floor is bigger than your first. Right. So your new roof is going to be a little bit bigger than your old Mushroom one, pole. which means it's going to collect a little bit more water and dump it off the side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, um, um, from, from what I've seen, he's, he's using the existing foundation as the footprint of the garage. Then you're doing a cantilever of about a foot uh, or 18 inches on the back in front of the house. Yes. And then you've got another two feet on your roof overhang on the front and back. So that's what. Uh, Seven oh, feet. Thank you. Uh, that's that's what we're trying to address here. Is that you're going to actually have more impervious surface because you're actually expanding, even though you're not expanding the footprint in the wetland, okay, per se, on the ground. You're creating a bigger area to collect water, and then that water has to be taken care of, whether it gets taken care of by going into some sort of uh, cistern or catch basin that keeps the water from going into the wetland. I guess that would be the, the question that this board is asking. I suspect that he probably doesn't have an answer for us, which I is why he asked either. for a full waiver of full site plan review so we didn't have to overcome or tackle those questions. Well, then maybe we shouldn't have granted that full site plan waiver. <laughs> Perhaps so. I, I, I'm not particularly troubled by a little bit more roof near this house, but I certainly hear the discussion from the board and let you guys decide whatever you want. My, my only concern is just the fact that this building, which is existing when you bought <coughs> it, was already there, but it's um, well, it maybe the fact that it's straddling the wetland setback is my only con my, my qualm with any of this is the fact that that's the case. Maybe that was adjusted because the wetlands grew over the years. It's been re-delineated, but it, that's that's my only issue with this. That I don't know. Um, I, I know that he's recently been to the zoning board to get a variance to allow this to be converted to a third residence, and I assume that Robert would the would the zoning board have had these plans and drawings before them when they saw this? Uh, they did not have this plan, I don't believe, no, but because, again, the actual footprint on the ground was not expanding, that's why the actual encroachment of the wetland is not a factor for them. Okay. Okay. So that's why they, that's the way that they consider it is what's on the ground? Right. All right. So in terms of the encroachment piece, that's something we leave to the zoning board. In terms of the impervious surface piece, that's planning board. So. And did he go to ComCom? Did they look at this? I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know if this. Did you go to Conservation Commission at all for this? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah so I, it may not have had to. I don't think he's in any aquifer district or anything, so okay. he may not have been well, prompted to, but this, the board could certainly condition just a ConsCom mm -hmm. review. I mean, f fundamentally, it's not really a big deal. It's just sort of that the. the the building is straddling the line that was behind the garage. It's like a seasonal stream. It's dry in the summer, and in the spring, it'll be a seasonal stream about this wide going through it. Mm. Unfortunately, it is. Although it's mm. probably not the highest value wetland in the, on the planet. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you what, what do you want to do, board? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, I've gone. Yeah. Oh, just another quick question. You've eliminated the deck on the back of the home. You're going to have a different access out of the home from the back side? So that you I have was thinking of just a stairway down from a doorway. A doorway coming down from the back for a second egress. Okay. Right. A stairway from the second floor or from the first floor? From the second floor? From the second, yeah. Stairway Sa from the second floor would count as an intrusion into the right setback. Yeah. So if you had a first floor access where you're basically exiting on the ground level and you've got essentially mm -hmm. no structure built on the back of the building, you're okay with what you have. Okay. If you wanted to do that stairway off the back from a second floor down or this deck, you got to go see the zoning board again and get them to bless that for you as a variance, well, allowing I, that I intrusion. To I can scratch back. that too. You know, I just figured you wanted an egress on the second floor there. You know, well, I, 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 I could bring it out of the side right towards the front. <coughs> it wouldn't have anything to do with the uh, wetland setback. Is that correct? 
this picture has two. E I mean, uh, two means of egress: one on the side and one on the front. Right. I don't know what the fire marshal is going to require of you, or whether that's satisfactory. I think it's all he needs to. Mm. It doesn't matter that mm -hmm. they're on the sides I instead of the front and back. I assume your windows are operable. Excuse me. As well, from yeah. the second floor, your windows are operable. Oh yeah. So yeah. I think technically that still counts as an egress. Okay. Yeah. It's a jump, but nonetheless. Okay. Other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Look, you do understand, therefore, what we're saying that you simply cannot Add put anything on the back of the house which sticks out okay. on touches the ground. I mean, you can put it mustn't have any ground support because otherwise you've got to go back to the zoning board to get them to agree to it. It's um, it's yeah. part of the room. And, and obviously, I would like to make certain you really do understand that, and we'd want that made quite clear. Not saying you can't do it. It's just simply saying, if you want to do it, and when you got in there and you feel it would be better if you had one, you have to go back and see the zoning board and explain to them what you're going to do. And they will, they will almost undoubtedly bless it, and then you have to go through the same procedures, and the building department have to inspect it and all the rest of it. It's just trying it's to explain the, 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 the intricacies of this to you. I understand. Well, that's great. That's all that matters. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Other comments or questions? As the flip side of that, then, along the same lines of it, you can't leave your building over the base of that foundation. You could do the same thing and have at least a deck on the back of it that was cantilevered. Again, you're increasing your impervious area, but if the catch is you can't touch the ground... Good tie point. it back to your building. It wouldn't be a big one, but yeah. Mr. Chairman, it would be nice. I think everybody's had a go, on, and I don't hear any other questions. May I make a motion that we grant uh, the, uh, the final approval on this slot subject to the various conditions in the memo that Robert put together? And uh, that's my motion. Before we ask for a second for that motion, do the, Robert, do your conditions include the request to look at the easements and a request oh, to sorry. remove the deck from the picture? Conservation Commission is not listed in the condition, so you would have to add that. Uh, the the access easement, we've got a condition under 10C to have it noted on the plan with the book and page information. Um, and what was the last one? Uh, to remo the remove the deck. Guarantee the deck. Right. Nothing yeah, at the back. I don't believe that that was added into the condition, so you'd have to put that on there as well. Okay, so let's put those two additional ones in there and then add to the book and page call that he supply it to the department to look at the easement. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I assume that's all consistent with your motion? Absolutely, sir. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Mr. Chairman, no, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to second, but I do have a question. Okay. I've noted that some people have come in the room since you first had a public hearing, and I don't know if they came for this or not, but you might ask for public input if that's okay with you. Thank you. Sure, why not? I mean, okay. Why not? Anybody wish to weigh in on this application? Okay. Came in? No. Okay. okay. Easy enough. Um, always glad to have my public input. Okay, Desiree and Vinny, you both had your hand up for a second. Vinny wanted it. Oh, I heard him. I heard him. I'll take it. We'll get your name <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> I didn't want the it. second. Okay, so we have a second for Alistair's motion. If there's no other discussion, Mike? I just want to, I wanted to understand the um, reason for the Conservation Commission request. What's the outcome or the purpose of that? And then what would be the result or changes that uh, Mr. Sanders would have to make as a result of that visit? I have a feeling that the motivation for the Conservation Commission is just the proximity of the wetlands, and the Conservation Commission will probably tell him not to use salt, not to use uh, high nitrogen fertilizer, and to not use hay, use straw, perhaps use low-impact landscape. And then he, if, if we make that a condition of our approval, he would have to comply with those by virtue of our saying so, because the Conservation Commission doesn't have its own independent authority. So the so then the point is that, that he's to attend that meeting and then whatever conditions they set he should abide by in retro we would support those yes and if he if they for some reason came up with a condition that he felt was unjust he could come to us for some relief from that okay thank you got that right all right any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed any abstaining. Seven zero zero. You are approved. You'll get a letter with all those conditions laid out in them, and some communication from 
Robert and the rest of the folks in the department. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you for being thank answering you. all our thank questions you. so well. Yeah, and you can take the young folk home with you. Thank you okay, item number four on agenda is Meridian Land Services, Inc., as the applicant and the Robin M. Warren Revocable Trust. As the owner, review for acceptance and consideration of final approval of a minor subdivision of one lot into two lots. The parcel is located at 17 Knollwood Drive in the R Residential and Aquifer Conservation Districts. It is tax map 6C, lot 292-2. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? I have nothing to add. Okay. I see you've already come up to the table for us and are signing in. When you're ready, um, introduce yourself and then tell us about your proposal. Can you hear me okay? I can. Yes, thank you. Okay, Grant. Thank you. Um, my name is Mike Hammer. I'm a professional land surveyor with Meridian Land Services, and I'm representing the applicant, Robin Warren, who isn't here this evening. Uh, she currently owns about 12 and a half acres of land that have frontage on Knollwood Drive and Joppa Road. Um, I guess a little history to this particular parcel. This parcel right here was once part of that of the, uh, the larger parcel, which is outlined in green in 1992 that was subdivided as a frontage lot subdivision. At that time... Don't go too far away from the microphone there. That's a good at the time. There you yeah. go. At the time, uh, in, there is water present in Joppa Road. At that time, an easement was granted to extend water to the existing dwelling. Uh, that has never been utilized. Uh, but it's present there. It's an existing easement just for information purposes. The current parcel has a approved septic system and has a uh, well water service. What we propose, uh, oh sorry, in about two months ago we visited ZBA and we requested relief from the minimum frontage requirement for the purposes of this subdivision. We showed this plan to them. And we were approved to have 40 feet for the existing dwelling being the end of Knollwood Drive. Uh, with that variance granted, we have drawn a division line here to create a new frontage lot that has in excess of 300 feet of frontage where the minimum, I believe, is 250. Um, and the acreage on the parcel is slightly over five so that we could avoid state subdivision approval. While we don't have to go for state subdivision approval, we did perform a PERC test on the lot to prove that a septic it could indeed support a septic system. Um, beyond that, it's kind of a plain subdivision. Um, there is, the parcel is about five acres in size. Uh, about four and a half of that, a little bit full, more than that, is uplands. Uh, so we meet that minimum in spades. And I know we're going to get, I don't have the copy of the report in front of me. Uh, the only comment we really received from staff, or there were two, uh, first of all, there was a request for us to either submit a waiver or for you folks to identify uh, compliance with 4061R, which is uh, sidewalk. There isn't any sidewalk, as far as I know, anywhere on Joppa Road. I could be wrong. There certainly isn't within a half mile of this particular parcel. So putting in 300 feet of sidewalk along Joppa Road, I don't think provides any kind of significant public benefit. So we would ask that the board give us relief there. Uh, I do have a written copy of a waiver that I'll be happy to submit to you. Uh, and the other comment that we received was from DPW. Uh, they noted that the minimum distance between the center line of the road and the side of the existing side of, uh, right of way as represented on this plan is less than 25 feet and they would like a easement for the purposes of future improvements. I have since receiving that made some measurements and at one end of the lot we're at 24 and a half feet and at the south end of the lot we're at 23 and a half feet to the center line. Uh, for the purposes of most roadway improvements you're looking at a 12 foot travel lane plus a four foot shoulder. We can even exaggerate that a little bit more and say well, you know, let's give it six feet for a sidewalk, a curb, and a green strip, and still have four feet for um, 
grading, and we haven't even met 22 feet yet. So for all intents and purposes, I'd rather not have our client take on the additional burden of giving a foot and a half strip easement to a half a foot strip easement along the right of way. I don't think that DPW was aware of that circumstance because of the nature of Joppa Hill Road, the variable width, and at some locations, certainly Joppa Hill is very, very tight, and that would be a most appropriate request at those locations. If you don't feel that we really meet that category, of course, you'll be the judge. Um, and I believe I've covered everything, but I'm sure you'll find something I missed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first thing that we've got to um, determine is uh, to determine whether the application is complete and prepared for our review. What's the rule of the board with respect to that question? I still move. Is there a second for Desiree's motion? Yes, yes. Yeah. Alistair is going to second that one. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7 0 0. Okay. Um, I, uh, more of a comment than a question. Certainly. Um, it looks like on your plan, you've used the same line type to divide your soil types as you use for your wetland setbacks. And that creates a little bit of um, confusion in trying to determine what those lines mean when the key. Be glad to change that. Um, yeah, that's all, that's all I want to do is make it clear. Um, your building setback lines also use the long and the three dashes as the same as the wetland designation. It's a little bit lighter weight, but it's also one long and three short. Be glad to change that too. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're clear on what all the lines mean on the plan. Certainly. Any other comments or questions? Well, there, there's one question which seems what Gillian Harris's memo of 20, April 28th is in conflict with what Mr. Hammer has just said it says in her memo she says the is serviced by municipal water and private septic. What you're saying is you have an easement for municipal water but you don't use it. I believe that's the case. I um can never say 100%. I was instructed that I, we ha we're currently using well water, and to the best of my knowledge, we d are not connected into the town service. Okay. All right. It's Is just, that, a, Robert, you might just want to clarify that position. Not it that may it matters. also be that the Joppa Hill lot, the new lot, is going to be served from town water, perhaps. Almost certainly it'd have to be. Almost certainly, yeah. That may be what Gillian meant in the memo. Well... But, yeah, some kind of clarification one way or another so we know where the surface of service is coming from. Other comments or questions? Members of the board. You presumably saw Gillian's memo, Mr. Hummer, of April 28th? Yes, sir. All right. And or nothing, you've got no upset about it? No, the, the only two things that I had any concern about um, I've addressed in my introduction. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Are there any abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in and offer the board any information as we consider this application? Going once, going twice, seeing nobody come forward, <laughs> close the public hearing. Um, Mr. Chairman, shall I make a motion that we grant the waiver on the sidewalk subject to the, the criteria? Uh, it's not on this page. Well, we can okay. decide that it's also not necessary. So, All right. This is our usual choice. Oh, I see. 4.07, uh, we could move that the sidewalk waiver is not necessary by virtue of 4.07. I'll make that motion. Who makes that motion? Is there a second for that motion? Second. Second by Councilor Koenig. Any other discussion on the sidewalk waiver or the lack of need for a sidewalk waiver? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7002 find that the sidewalk waiver is not necessary. So you don't have to build the sidewalk, no waiver necessary. Um, what's the rule of the board with respect to final disposition? Well, what about this point about what the DPW have raised, whether that we're going to agree or we're going to put set aside the DPW's comment about increasing the uh, set, whatever the, whatever the right word is, the easement for the, for the DPW. I mean... I presume if they, in the future, if they ever did want to widen Joppa Road, they could use uh, public, what is it, the um, eminent domain to take it. <coughs> yeah, all the <coughs> towns are really reluctant to jump in there and do any yeah. of that stuff if they don't have to, although it's not much different to take it now than it would be to take it then. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, actually, I, I think the I'm, and this, I'm going to argue against, I guess, my, my request here. Um, when you take something by eminent domain, you have to pay damages. In this circumstance, there wouldn't be any damages paid. However, it's not really a question of that. It's a question of the necessity for a foot for the purposes of making road improvements. Um, in the road improvement program that you're currently undertaking in town does have limited sidewalks. Um, but even if that, that's the case with curbing and sidewalks and the travel lane, if you extend it out to 14 feet, the current conditions are more than adequate to cover that particular space. Again, I believe that the comment came from DPW, bearing in mind that there are portions of Joppa Road that are probably 30 feet wide um, or potentially less. And that's where they would most definitely need that kind of relief. And since that is not this particular circumstance, um, I think it is not ne not necessary for us to com comply based on your discretion. It certainly makes a lot of sense to what, what you're saying. I think we're <coughs> sort of always reluctant to not have the response or the input from DPW. So yeah. I tried like calling Kyle, but I missed him about a half a dozen times. Yeah, I, I certainly understand it's hard to get through to folks. Robert, do you think of a strategy for us to make a decision tonight that allows Kyle to weigh in and affect uh, this? Or? Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't because then it kind of gets into the issue of these potentially granting things because if Kyle doesn't agree, then we're coming back here anyway, and it's a new notice. So if you want to get resolution, I think the easiest thing to do is continue it and ask the question to Kyle. Or make a decision one way or another. Or make a decision one way or the other. Yeah. What's the reluctance? on the part of the owner to grant an easement? The reluctance <coughs> is the burden is on her for additional costs for attorney fees and takes time for review for town council. She's eager to finish up on this particular project and move forward. Um, and again, f for the sake of compliance, it's, I, I don't know how to exactly phrase this any other way, but a foot a half a foot to a foot and a half does ma not make any significant difference um, to what's out there for the reasons that I've stated. I can't think of any kind of practical purpose. If perhaps, and I, I thought about this, let's say that the desire was in the future to build a road so that there's a parking lane as well. If that was the circumstance, then we would need at least 60 feet in width, and the request would have been for an easement to accommodate 30 feet from center line which wasn't the case. The request was for 25 feet, which is commensurate to having a travel lane and perhaps a sidewalk. Um, and to do that stuff uh, in the standards of design that are, are held up by Ashto and the state and the town of Merrimack, um, that's, not that's not necessary, that extra space. I think that the DPW may have something else in mind than just a wider road or sidewalks because I don't think that they foresee a date where you would put the sidewalks out on Joppa Hill. They may be thinking in terms of drainage or snow storage or snow plow clearances or something along those lines that make uh, some impact on what they do regularly. Um, I, I doubt that you encountered anybody at DPW that's thinking sidewalks on Joppa Hill Road. Then to that same comment, uh, the question that I have, and I don't think you need to be a PE necessarily or an engineer or even a design professional to consider this, is a half a foot on the side of the road going to make a significant difference in collecting snow and providing for a snow plow or for drainage design? No, makes sense. But at the same time, having a uniform width up and down the road so that they don't have to worry about it's 25 feet here, but it's 24 and a half feet for this lot, and then it goes back out again. So the counter to that particular argument would be you have a bunch of existing lots on the other side of the street that are not compliant. Mm -hmm. That's true. There isn't any way that you're going to acquire that through this particular process, so you would have to do it through an <coughs> eminent domain. So it's very unlikely that until such, an something ha until such, thing, such a thing happens that you'll ever have for that uniform width. And I don't think that the stuff on the other side of the street is atypical to most of Joppa Hill Road. I don't disagree with you at all. Um, I think that pretty much lays out the pros and the cons on both sides. Let's see what the board wants to do. We still don't know what Kyle's 
intent was for this. Correct. And so if you want to know what his intent was, we would have to continue this to our June 7th meeting. And, Mr. Chairman, I, I know there is a town not far from here with which I'm very familiar, which has decided to establish a minimum of 25 feet for any development that goes on. It, it somehow, this 25 feet just rings a bell because I know that's what the situation is. I, I'm reluctant to, to let it go. I think... If the gentleman doesn't want to do it, then he's going to get a continuance and we have to ask PW, PWD, Mr. Carl Fox, to explain exactly what he's doing. If he's prepared to agree with PWD, then we can approve it. But that's where I, I rest my case. I think um, you're right that a lot of towns have established some width that they want for travel lanes, whether it's 25 yep. or something. other. And it's 25, what is 25 in Hollis. I, I, would, I would caution against sort of getting married to a number on some kind of arbitrary basis if we don't understand what the reasoning is well, for it. Uh, but the fact that it's 25 and 25 seems to rings a bell to me. That's all I'm saying. Uh, it, may, may make so and, and, and Kyle could probably give us the explanation really quickly. I'm just trying to think of a way to not have this applicant delayed for a month. My, my well, client would appreciate here, that. The, um, the 25 feet was here before Kyle was, frankly. Uh, this was set up in our subdivision regulations many years ago. And the purpose being to allow for uh, widening, straightening, sidewalk, drainage, the things you mentioned, and that they felt that that was a proper number to accommodate those things that we were thinking of at that time. <coughs> so it's been around a long time. It's been in our regulations for a long time. We have done it in every subdivision I can think of. We have 50 foot, we have a 50 foot road as a minimum. And uh, in cases like this, where you're developing one side, we ask for 25 feet from the center line. That's been our, our practice in the past. And, and it, it certainly can be the board's yeah. decision tonight in terms of the disposition of this to require the 25 feet and not continue it. So uh, along with uh, Mr. S Nelson's comments, at one point in time, many towns, the standard was 40 feet. And over time, it's been <coughs> identified that 50 feet is more appropriate. Now, in regards to saying every subdivision, I beg to differ because the lot to the south was a subdivision that was approved by this board in 1992 and no such restrictions were put on it. Now granted this is many years later and we're a little bit wiser yeah. um, but certainly I, I also when we did our survey measured those portions of the road just we located and I can make measurements in the office after the fact and it's actually less than um, th there's less clearance than we have of, on our current so it's more like 23 for the corner lot in your subdivision? For the, that, in that the previous subdivision, correct. Mm -hmm. So um, just more information to add to the pot while you're stirring. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. What's the will of the board? Is there a way of approving this tonight subject to an agreement on Kyle's part that that 25 feet is not needed? And if he decides it is, then subject to an easement. I, I don't know about with Kyle, mm -hmm. but I know with other town departments, they've asked that we not put them in that position okay. of being the final arbiter of, okay. a, of an go, application. Only go back last <laughs> week, last time. <laughs> the fire department slapped our wrist. Yeah. Own your decisions, planning board. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I made a suggestion. If, if he can't agree then it is a continuance. At least that's my proposal. If the board's making a decision between requiring the 25 feet or continuing it to June, do you have a preference as to which one of those possible choices? My client would not like to go to June. Okay. So the better of those two options, even though it's not the one you want, would be the 25-foot easement. easement? It's actually a foot easement. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, an additional yeah. foot easement. Uh, all right, so we have the applicant's input. Any other thoughts or questions? Are there any other issues other than this easement with respect to this subdivision that the board wants to discuss? Um, I think that the only thing that we discussed that should probably be a, a condition of approval, if approval is where we go, is a clarification on where the water supply is coming from as to the new lot. Um, wherever the water supply is coming from from the old <coughs> lot probably doesn't matter a whole lot to us. Correct? Or did I... Get that wrong. Is uh -huh. there water going down? There's water going down Joppa Road. Yes, yeah. yeah. So any so this new lot 
would be hooking up to public water. Right. So we just don't know whether the old one is. It's not required. It's not required. I think that would be more a decision that would be rendered by the building department upon the application. But I don't think we care about the other one. Yeah, the other one is uh, is connected to whatever it's connected to, right. which is probably a well, and since there's a well behind the house. Um, mm -hmm. What's the will of the board with respect to final disposition? Well, the other thing you mentioned also is to revise. I don't know if you want to official uh, make it official. Oh. Yeah, revise yeah. The you line fix up the lines. lines. Do you I'll need a condition to get you? You to want do to put it as a condition? That's fine. One of those, one of those yeah. the technical conditions that you get to the end. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, what's the will of the board with respect to disposition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we grant final approval on this project sub to, subject to the conditions indicated in Julian Harris's letter of the, April the 28th, 2016, which specifically addresses item 8B, and that is what we will require. Okay. With the addition of the... Plus the things on the... A couple of other minor ones that we mentioned this yeah, evening. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> is there a second for Alistair's motion? You can't second one, Jeff, while you're an alternate. Oh. <laughs> we'll go with Vinny. Um, any other discussion? Oh, Vinny did. Vinny. Vinny did, sorry. Is that um, if there's no other discussion, all in favor of granting final approval subject to the conditions, say aye. 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 Any opposed? One opposed? One abstain. No. Any abstaining? None abstaining. Six, one, zero for final approval. Uh, Mike was opposed. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for your time. That brings us to item five on our agenda, which is discussion and possible action regarding other items of concern. Um, I have one or two items of concern, assuming I could find my notes here somewhere. One is that our annual review with the town council is approaching next Thursday, and I wanted to ask of you. What's that? It's exciting. Exciting. <laughs> Ask of you are if there are any subjects or topics for which you think we ought to uh, communicate with the town council. I know that um, Nelson and uh, Jeff and Alistair had a conversation about some of the things in our master plan, um, and I'm going to find out what some of those are from Nelson and bring some of those integrated into a message as well. But I wanted to give you a chance. If you think of any after when we're not here, please send them. Um, to Tim and let Tim distribute them to board members so that we've got a right to know law situation in order um, if you think of any communications with the town council. Uh, the other item... I would make you mention, Mr. Chairman, I will, I will be there to draw you the flak for you. There we go. <laughs> we had Alistair take some shots. The other item on our uh, discussion items is <coughs> Meridian Land <coughs> Services, who is the developer for the Chestnut Hill subdivision, which is the one by the middle school has made a request that we grant them a three-month extension of their one-year period to complete their terms of uh, conditions of approval. The staff has recommended that instead of a three-month uh, approval, we give them a six-month <coughs> approval just to avoid being back here in a couple of months because something didn't quite work out as well as they had hoped. What's the will of the board with respect to Meridian's request on Chestnut Hill? It's taken them a year and a half to do this. They had one year, and they are not prepared <coughs> to get their plan signed yet. They asked for three extra months. I, I do know from, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, one of the companies with whom they were working intensively, I believe, has had to go into receivership, which I think has mm -hmm. screwed them up a little bit. Mr. Chairman, I think we should take the staff's advice on this one. Um, I, I mean, obviously, we want Meridian to have the extension, but I think... It makes good sense. I mean, much as though we like seeing Ken Clinton here, uh, we don't need to see him unnecessary. So let's give him a six month. If they can do it in three, fine. But it saves. Yeah, they, they can, can always do it sooner. They can be. Mm -hmm. They can have it tomorrow if they yeah. want. Right. <coughs> uh, so there's a motion by Alistair for a six month extension. Is there a second? second? Second by Lynn. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Mm -hmm. Seven zero zero to aye. grant that. Nelson is abstaining. Oh, Nelson. Nelson. No, I'm not. I'm not. Ex I'm not voting, not voting on the motion. Yes. I wanted the next. <laughs> the next oh, item of discussion. <coughs> I wanted to make a comment. I would like to review. I'd like for the staff to know that I would like to review the uh, engineering design, the, the water, water design. How the uh, uh, drainage, drainage design. 
that uh, is being revised. And I'd like to review that. Uh, CLD reviewed it with a lot of comments, and I would like to see the response to those comments when they come in. Is that Chestnut Hill? Is it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is we not talking about Chestnut Hill? Yes, yes we, we are. are. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to make certain this will be worked. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, that's no, right. I'm, I'm all for you. I'm a, so that's I'm fine. Nelson, would you like the staff to arrange it, be distributed to the board, or you just want to go into the office and have a look at it? I will just go in and look at it, but the board certainly can do the same, or we can bring it to the board for review if that's the pleasure of the board. But I just personally okay. have an interest in that. Sounds good. Um, for my own part, I'll uh, allow you to have a cut at it, and if you see anything that you think needs to come to us, will. let us know. I will. <laughs> Any other discussion? Any other items of concern unrelated to Chestnut Hill or any other place? Seeing none, we are at the item six on our agenda, which is approval of the minutes of April 19th, 2016. And we which do not there are yeah. none because we due to the um, fact that the community development director took last week off, he hasn't gone through them yet, so they ha we haven't got them yet. There we go. So that so will we'll right get two lots of minutes next time. Right past item six on our agenda to item seven. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Second by Desiree Fault. Any discussion? There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? 700, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and don't forget to turn your microphone off. Dedicated to Lucifer. Lucifer that's, that's the right. devil. That's right. <laughs> he said the first protester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The I've first read the book. Yeah. It's well, I have it, and I've showed it on on my show yeah. before. But um, you know, Hillary Clinton is a disciple of Saul Alinsky. Well, Hillary knew she worked with Hil uh, Alinsky personally. Uh, Obama was trained by S Alinsky types, but he himself was didn't know him. He was kind of he was only probably eight or nine, or maybe not even I don't know, probably five or six. Hmm. Alinsky died, I think, seventy one, seventy two. But getting back to the Article 5 Convention of States, um, they're, uh, they're, they're also very active. They have uh, lots of money, and it's a one issue. Now they get a full-time guy in the Northeast who uh, a few years ago was labeling me a, a, a paid out-of-state operative when I was influencing people in Maine. Uh, we guess we have a membership base in Maine. That's part of my territory. <coughs> now that he's a paid operative, out-of-state operative, I guess it's okay because he's enforcing Article 5.